In this video, you're gonna learn an easy, no-nonsense way to test your Express applications. That means we can verify that when we make an HTTP GET request to the following URL, we get the Hello World response back. Now, traditionally, testing HTTP apps has been one of the more difficult things to test. You would have to fire up a server like we do here, then you would need some code to actually make the request to the appropriate URL, and then you'd have to dig through the response, getting what you want and making assertions about it, whether it's headers, the status code, the body, or anything else. It is a real burden. That is not the goal for this section. The goal here is to make testing easy and approachable, so we're going to use a library called SuperTest to test our Express applications. SuperTest was created by the developers who originally created Express. It has built-in support for Express, and it makes testing your Express apps dead simple. In order to get started, let's go ahead and pull up the Docs page so you know where it lives if you ever want to look at any other features that it has to offer. If you Google SuperTest, it should be the first result. It's the Vision Media repository, and the repository itself is called SuperTest. I'm going to switch over to the repository page, and we can take a quick look at what it has to offer. Down below, we can find installation instructions and introduction stuff. We don't really need that. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at an example. Right here, we have an example of how SuperTest works. We created an Express application just like we normally would, and we define a route. Then we make a call to the request method, which is provided by SuperTest, passing in our Express application. We say we want to make a GET request to the following URL. Then we start making assertions right here. There's no need to manually check either the headers, the status code, or the body. It has built-in assertions for all of that. To get started, we're going to go ahead and install it in our application by running npm install from the terminal. I have my node server still running. I'm going to shut that down, and we can use npm i. The module name is super test, and we're going to be grabbing the most recent version at 2.0.0. This is a test specific module, so I'm not going to be installing it with save. I'm going to use save dev to add it to my dev dependencies in package.json. With super test installed, we are now ready to start filling out that server.test.js file. Now it doesn't yet exist inside of the server folder, so we can go ahead and create it right now. It's going to sit just alongside server.js, server.test.js. Awesome. Now that we have this in place, we can start setting up our very first test. Up at the very top, I am going to be creating a constant called request and setting that equal to the return result from requiring super test. And this is the main method we're going to be using to test our Express apps. From here, we can go ahead and load in the Express application. Now inside of server.js, we don't have an export that exports the app, so we're going to have to add that. I'm going to add it down below by creating module.exports.app and setting that equal to the app variable. Awesome. And now we have an export called app that we can access from other files. The server is still going to run as expected when we start it from the terminal, not in test mode. We just added an export, so if anyone happens to require it, they can get access to that app. Over inside of server.test.js, I'm going to import this. I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call the variable app. Then we're going to go ahead and require using require dot forward slash server dot JS or just server. And then I'm going to access the dot app property. Awesome. With this in place, we now have everything we need to write our very first test. The first test we're going to write is a test that verifies when we make an HTTP GET request to the following URL, we get hello world back. To do this, we will be calling it just like we did for our other tests. We're still using Mocha as the actual test framework. We're using super test to fill in the gaps. It should return hello world response. Perfect. Now I'm going to set up my function. This is going to be an asynchronous call, so I will be providing done as the argument to let Mocha know to wait before determining whether or not the test passed or failed. From here, we can now make our very first call to request. To use SuperTest, you call request, passing in the actual Express application. In this case, we pass in the app variable. Then we can start chaining together all of the methods we need to make the request, 
make our assertions, and finally wrap things up. First up, you're going to be using a method to actually make that request, whether it's a get, put, delete, or a post. We'll be talking about all of those in the next section when we create a full-blown REST API. For now, we're going to be making a get request, so we will use dot get. Dot get takes the URL right here. We'll provide forward slash just as we did over in server.js. Next up, we can go ahead and make some assertions. We've already made the request. There's nothing more left to do. To make assertions, we're going to use dot expect. Now, dot expect is one of those methods that does different things depending on what you pass to it. In our case, we'll be passing in a string. I'm going to pass in the string, which will be the response body that we assert. Hello, world, with an exclamation mark at the end. And now that we're done and we've made our assertions, we can go ahead and wrap things up. To wrap up a request in SuperTest, all you do is you call dot end, passing in done as the callback. This handles everything behind the scenes, so you don't need to manually call done at a later point in time. All of it is handled by SuperTest. And with these four lines, we have successfully tested our very first API request. I'm going to go ahead and kick things off over in the terminal by running our test watch script. npm run test hyphen watch. The test script is starting and right here we have some tests. We have our test should return hello world response showing up right here. Everything went great. And this is fantastic. Now we can take things a step further in making other assertions about the data that comes back. For example, I can go ahead and use expect right here to make an assertion about the status code. By default, all of your express calls are going to return a 200 status code, which means that things went OK. And if I save the file, the test still passes. Now let's go ahead and make some changes to the request to make these tests fail. First up, in server.js, I'm just going to add a few characters to the string. I'll add a few extra Ws and I'll save the file. This should cause the super test test to fail, and it does indeed do that. Right here, we get a message. We expected hello world response body, but we got hello world. This is letting us know exactly what happened. And back inside of server.js, we can remove those extra Ws and try something else. Now, we haven't talked about how to set a custom status for your response, but we can do that with one method, dot status, just like this. And we can chain it on before send and we can pass in the numerical status code. For example, I could use a 404 for page not found. If I save the file this time around, the body is going to match up, but over in the terminal, you can see we now have a different error. We expected a 200, but we got a 404. Using SuperTest, we can make all sorts of assertions about our application. Now, the same thing is true for different types of responses. For example, I'm going to go ahead and create an object as the response. Let's make a simple object and we'll create a property called error and we'll set error equal to a generic error message for a 404, something like page not found. Now we're sending back a JSON body, but currently we're not making any assertions about that body. So the test is going to fail. We can go ahead and update our tests to expect JSON to come back. In order to get that done, all we have to do over inside of server.test is change what we pass to expect. Instead of passing in a string, I'm going to go ahead and pass in an object. Now we can match up that object exactly. Here, I'm going to go ahead and expect that the error property exists and that it equals exactly what we have here. Page not found. Capital P page not found with a period at the end. With this in place, our assertions now match up with the actual endpoint we've defined over inside of the Express application. I should be able to save the file and watch all my tests pass. Over in the terminal, you can see we are still getting an error. We expected a 200, but got a 404. I forgot to tweak that, so I will change this expect call to a 404. Now this should cause a new refresh of the tests, and this time everything should be passing. If I scroll down, you can see it is indeed passing. Should return hello world response is passing. It took about 41 milliseconds to complete, and that is perfectly fine. 
While a lot of the built-in assertions do get the job done for the majority of cases, there are times where you want a little more flexibility. For example, we just learned about all those cool assertions expect can make. We can use to include, to exclude, all of that stuff is really handy and it's a shame to lose it. Well, luckily, there's a lot of flexibility with SuperTest. What we can do instead of taking an object and passing it into expect or a number for the status code, we can go ahead and provide a function. This function is going to get called by SuperTest and it's going to get past the response. This means we can access headers, body, anything we want to access from the HTTP response is going to be available right here. And we can pipe it through the regular expect assertion library like we've been doing before. I'm going to go ahead and load it in, creating a constant called expect and setting it equal to require expect. Awesome. Now, before we look at how it's going to work, we're going to go ahead and make a change in server.js. What I want to do is add a second property onto here. I'm going to add an error and then I'll add uh, something else. I'm going to go ahead and use name, setting it equal to the application name to do app v 1.0. Now that we have this in place, we can take a look at how we can use those custom assertions over inside of our test file. Right here, we're going to have access to the response and on the response, there is a body property like we've seen in the past. This is going to be a JavaScript object with key value pairs, which means we would expect to have an error property and a name property, which we set right here. Back inside of our test file, we can make a custom assertion using expect. I'm going to expect something about the body response.body. Now I can go ahead and use any assertion I like, not just the equals assertion, which is the only one super test supports. I'm going to go ahead and use the to include assertion. Remember to include lets you specify a subset of the properties on the object. As long as it has those ones, that's fine. It doesn't matter that it has extra ones. In our case, we can go ahead and inside of to include just specify the error message, leaving off the fact that name exists at all. I want to check that error equals page not found formatted exactly like we have it over inside of server.js. Now, when I go ahead and save the file back inside of the terminal, things restart and all of my tests are passing. This is fantastic. Using a combination of super test and expect, we can have super flexible test suites for our HTTP endpoints. With this in place, it is now time for a challenge where you're going to create your very own express route and you're going to define a test that makes sure it works as expected. There's going to be two sides to this, the actual setup in server.js and the test. We can start inside of server.js. Down here, you're going to make a new route. I'll leave a few comments to specify exactly what I'd like. It's going to be an HTTP get route. The route itself will be forward slash users, and we can just assume this returns an array of users. You can pass an array back through the send method, just like we do an object here. Now, this array is going to be an array of objects where each object is a user. For now, I want you to give users, give users a name property and an age prop. Go ahead and create two or three users for this example. You can just add yourself and add some of your friends putting in the first name and the age as props. Now, once you have this done, you're going to be responsible for writing a test that asserts it works as expected. That's going to happen over in server.test.js. Down below, you're going to make a new test, make a new test. And this test is going to assert a couple things. First up, I want you to assert that the status code that comes back is a 200. Assert 200. And I want you to make an assertion that inside of that array, your user object exists. And you're going to do that using to include. Assert that you exist in users array. Now, it's perfectly fine if there are other users. I've told you to add them. What's really important, though, is that you just test that your user exists. An object in the array with the first name equal to whatever you set, that's the name prop, and the age equal to whatever you set as well. Once that's in place, go ahead and run the test suite. Make sure your new test is passing. If it is, fantastic, you are done. You can go ahead and click play. Take a moment, knock that out, and when you're done, click play. How'd you do? Hopefully you were able to make not only the endpoint, but also the test using super test. 
I'm going to define the endpoint first over inside of server.js. Just above the comments, I'll call app.get so we can register the brand new HTTP endpoint for our application. And this one is going to be at forward slash users. Next up, we're going to specify the callback that takes both request and response. This is going to let us actually respond to the request. And the goal here was just to respond with an array. In this case, I'm going to call response.send, passing in an array of objects. The first object will be someone else. I'll set the name equal to my friend Mike's name, and we'll set his age equal to 27. Then I can add another one. This one will be me. I'm going to add the second object to the array with a name equal to Andrew and an age equal to 25. And the last one we'll do, I'll set the name equal to Jen and the age equal to 26. Perfect. Now, obviously we're using static data here, but in the next section, we're going to start creating a real API with real data. So it's important to learn how to test with static data. So we don't have to learn two things at the same time. Now that we have our endpoint done, we can go ahead and save server.js, move into server.test.js and start worrying about actually creating our test case. Just below the comments, you needed to start things out by calling it. It is the only way to make a new test. It should return my user object. Then I'm going to go ahead and specify the callback function. It is going to get past that done argument because remember, this one is going to be asynchronous. To kick things off inside of the test case, I will be calling request just like we did up above, passing in the express application. And now we can go ahead and set up the actual call. In this case, we're just making a call, a get request to the following URL inside of quotes forward slash users. Next up, we can start making our assertions. And the first thing you were supposed to assert is that the status code is a 200, which is the default status code used by Express. I can assert that by calling dot expect and passing in the status code as a number. In this case, I'll pass in 200. After this, I wanted you to use a custom expect assertion. This means that you're going to call expect passing in a function and you're going to use to include inside of it to make the assertion that you exist in that user's array. I'm going to call expect the method passing in the function and that function will get called with the response. This is going to let us make some assertions about the response. What we're actually going to do is make an assertion using expect. We're going to expect something about the response body. In this case, we'll be checking that it includes using to include our user object. Now, remember, you can call to include on both arrays and objects. We've used the object one here. We have used the array one previously, but we'll use it again right now. All we do is pass in the item we want to confirm is in the array. In our case, it's an object where the name property equals Andrew. Use your name there and the age property equals whatever age you put. I'm going to go ahead and put 25, which is what I used over inside of server.js. Now that we have our custom expect call in place at the very bottom, we can call dot end. This is going to wrap up the request and we can go ahead and pass in done as the callback so it can properly fire off those errors if any actually occurred. And with this in place, we are ready to get going. I'm going to go ahead and save the file. Over inside of the terminal, you can see the tests are indeed rerunning. We have a test right here, should return my user object. It is passing. That is fantastic. Now we can confirm that we're not going crazy and testing the wrong thing by just messing up the data. If I add a lowercase a after the uppercase one in Andrew, the test fails. You can see that over in the terminal and this is fantastic. And now we have testing for our Express apps. Now we will be using Express extensively in the next couple of sections. For now though, we're going to talk about one more way we can test our node code that is coming up next. So stay tuned. I will see you then.